Welcome everybody to another exciting episode of HomeKit Insider. You've got me as always, Andrew O'Hara, and joining me this week is nobody because uh, some things kind of fell through. To be honest with you all, I had a very exciting co-host set to join me and uh, you know, scheduling didn't work out at the last minute. They were very busy working on some really cool content and maybe we'll talk about it. They're going to come on another episode. Uh, it'll be sometime in April. So I will keep you guys up to date when things get firm on that. Uh, but I'm really excited to have them join uh, the podcast for that episode. So that was going on. I've also been incredibly sick. Turns out that's a thing that happens more often when you have children. So I'm even now my throat is killing me as I am talking to you, but we still have some fun stuff to talk about this week. We're going to talk about a new robo mower. We're going to talk about some MagSafe stuff uh, or maybe G2 stuff. And then we're going to get into uh, you know, some gardening. We're going into spring. So let's get into all of this. So segue, they are bringing their Navamo i-series smart robot or smart lawn mowing robot to the US. So this did launch in Europe uh, roughly a, a month or so ago. Now it is coming stateside. So high level facts here, this will cover about a quarter acre lawn, no boundary wires needed, and it's using AI to automatically map your lawn as well as kind of figure out tracking where to go, all of that lovely information. This is priced at $9.99, so technically under a grand, for an AI powered, no boundary wire lawn mowing robot. These have me intrigued. And if I was predicting things on the show, you can probably bet that we're going to have some to talk about because I am excited about the prospect of these things. And a lot of these are coming not from mobility companies, which is, you know, where Segway is, but they're coming from like the robo vacuum cleaner market and then they're moving outside of the house to your lawn. And it's like every year at CES, we see new tech added to robo vacuums. And this year, all I heard was we're going to get robotic vacuum cleaners for your lawn. We're going to get robo lawn mowers that are going to be more affordable. They are going to be boundary free. That's the big thing. Usually with these robots, you have to put a wire into the ground, similar to an electric fence situation but for your robot and it would just traverse your lawn, mow, and when it would get to that boundary wire, turn around and go back. Um, that's also how you could keep it out of like garden beds or uh, rocky areas, anything like that. Now it's able to do it on its own. I think these are fascinating. For sure going to be trying some out. Will I try this one out? I don't know yet. I wanna to try to maybe get one or two uh, on my own. We'll see what's in the budget. And, and try some of these out. The follow-up question then is when we're gonna see these in things like Apple Home or even Matter for, for that regard. Uh, we just kind of got the robotic vacuum cleaners into Matter with that 1.2 spec. By the way, if you haven't listened or watched last week's episode, please do. Uh, Chris LaPre, uh, head of technology from the CSA joined to talk everything Matter. And we talked about a lot of things. It was a great episode. So again, if you haven't heard that one, you want to know what's going on with Matter, go back and listen to that. But I think this is cool. So the Navamo i-Series, a grand launching here in the US just in time for spring. So moving to the inside of your house, Belkin's Qi 2 3-in-1 charger is now available to buy. So this launched at, I think it was CES, this kind of like actually came out, um, but it's finally available to buy. So this is the three in one that we are looking at. And this is similar to the MagSafe one, but Belkin made a few different changes that I actually really like about this thing. So first off price point, $149.99, so $150, not cheap. It'll charge your iPhone, your Apple Watch and your AirPods or another small Qi device at the same time. This version is Qi 2, not MagSafe. So if you have an iPhone, I believe 13, 14, or 15, you're going to get that 15 watts of Qi 2 slash MagSafe power. 
couple improvements here to the other version is it is now USB-C instead of the proprietary power adapter it had before. The bottom base is rounded, I think looks better, a little more polished, clean looking, uh, just an overall improvement on the bottom of that. Uh, and it's more adjustable, so now like the iPhone can tilt, so you can have adjustable top there to your iPhone. So overall, I think this is definitely an upgrade from the MagSafe version. Price point isn't terrible, not great, but these are always a fan favorite. I know a ton of people were talking about these when they were announced. I saw more people talking about it on Twitter this week, excited that they are now shipping. So if you are interested in them, uh, if you want to see what it's looked like, I believe I said it this chapter art for this chapter, so you can see it visually, and then go ahead, comes in both black and white versions. There's links in the show notes for it if anyone is at all interested. So getting into some Apple Insider actual coverage here, we had two pieces of HomeKit news go up on the site this week. So first, we have kind of a follow-up. So as I've been talking about HomeKit routers, on the podcast, we have been working behind the scenes. And I say me, but it was William and more of the team tracking down some additional legwork. So the original kind of story came from me at CES, where I had a couple different manufacturers telling me that they were no longer able to submit their routers into the HomeKit Secure Router program. Apple was effectively discontinuing it. Existing routers would still work, no problem, but there was no more routers being certified. And since then, we've been talking to router manufacturers, we've been trying to get information from Apple as to what is going on, and Apple will only confirm that it is a program, they are not planning on discontinuing it. But that said, as William kind of points out in his piece, they're, they're basically dead. Even if Apple doesn't want to say that the program is, you know, ended, there's been no routers in years. I mean, Apple has basically launched with like Belkin uh, and Belkin still has one product, but it's like two generations old. We're now moving into Wi-Fi 7. Definitely nothing here on the horizon that's been announced by anybody. Just nothing new on the HomeKit router front. Uh, others like Eero, they're not, again, providing any additional information here other than to say, we don't plan to support it on their current generation routers. And yeah, again, even if Apple isn't saying this program is dead, it's effectively dead. So unfortunately, not the update that I would have hoped to have shared at some point, but that's kind of where we are in terms of HomeKit routers. So I talked to Chris LaPray about this as well, and it seems like even if the HomeKit router program is dead, routers may end up being something that we're going to see in matter. So even though we're not going to get an actual Apple product here, maybe we're going to get still something from matter that is similar in actual utilization. Something that's able to help protect your home and its smart home accessories by limiting where they're able to communicate, keeping them local on your network uh, versus hitting the cloud. Or if they are hitting cloud, they're only hitting their own servers and not just the entirety of the internet. I think that's more important than ever, especially because we have things like Matter now that are a little outside of home, outside of the Apple home. Security is still going to be important. So I think a HomeKit router or even a Matter router will be extra crucial. So we had one more story. I'm not going to go too far into this because I think Wes is going to touch on this next time he is on the pod. But Wes did an excellent review on two new TP-Link Tapo indoor cameras. So his whole thing here, they're affordable and they're HomeKit and they've got in-app AI tools. So if you are interested in learning more about that, go check it out. That is linked in the description. So two, one of them basically moves and the other does not move. So very interesting. TP-Link has had this back and forth relationship with HomeKit, some stuff supports it, some stuff doesn't. Uh, so I think it's very interesting. But yeah, that is up on the website. So it's linked down below in the description. Now, speaking of security, the CSA actually had a big uh, announcement this week. So this is still essentially backed by Apple. And Chris LaPray had hinted at this uh, on his time on the pod. But basically, there is a new 
standard, well, taking a step back, the Connectivity Standards Alliance has launched this new security initiative that's basically going to be a label for products that acknowledges when they have passed a certain threshold of security. So I think this is really interesting. Another way to help protect ourselves. So now we're gonna to have to look for this additional label on there if you wanna make sure that it's extra secure. But I think it's a very cool thing to add on to everything else that we're really having this focus on security. My concern when Matter was announced, even though it was backed by Apple, was that security was going to take a hit and that we couldn't trust all these other companies. Who knew how much we could trust the CSA in the certification process, like in all of their testing? How rigorous would it be? These were all concerns that I had. But stuff like this is very good. I'm, I'm glad to see that they are focusing on security and putting these labels on products to know when they're meeting that security threshold. Now, I have a couple things left to get into this episode. I know it's gonna be a little bit of a shorter episode. I can't banter with myself all that much. Yes, you can. No, you can't. It's weird and people will turn the podcast off. But if I can interrupt myself, we can thank one sponsor for this episode. You know them. I definitely love them. It is Shopify. And I I always love when Shopify <laughs> sponsors the podcast because they're such a cool platform. I used to do development like web dev before getting more into the digital marketing side. Like it was a kind of a transition there from digital web design, back end development, front end development into the digital marketing space. And I wish I had something as, as easy to use as Shopify back when I was doing this kind of stuff because it could get laborious. And even now, I know one very big company that's making the switch to Shopify. I don't want to like call them out because I don't know if that's something that they care about, but I know they're moving their website to it, which is really awesome to see. So Shopify is great for both consumers on the front end as well as developers and companies on the back end. On the back end side of things, it's really easy to be able to implement. Whether you're a small startup, whether you're selling digital goods, physical goods, you know, subscriptions, whatever it is, they can handle it all the way out to on the customer side of things because it's really easy to shop through a Shopify website. There's that unified, recognizable checkout experience that supports everything like Google Pay and Apple Pay or PayPal, like really seamless checkout process. Uh, Shopify actually really boast about that checkout process because they are able to help turn those browsers into buyers. They say they have the internet's best converting checkout up to 36 36% 36 better compared to other leading e-commerce platforms or commerce platforms, which is huge. They also say that they have <laughs> this new magic AI powered thing, the Shopify magic that is this AI powered all-star to really help you sell more on your website. There is a ton to love about Shopify. I also love the shop app that lets you track your purchase after you've already made it. That way you can see from like placing the order to shipping the order to receiving it to leaving reviews, all of this kind of stuff. So if you didn't know, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US and it supports over 175 countries right now. I know Allbirds, Nomad use it, there's Rothy's, Brooklyn, and millions of other uh, entrepreneurs use Shopify. So here's what you should do. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash homekit, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash homekit now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash homekit. Then I go to ching That's the ching noise for the button I'm going to hit on my desk every time we get through a Shopify ad. So two things that I want to talk about and one I want everyone's opinion on. So we're getting into spring, right? It's time to start planting things, gardening again. Uh, we're kind of getting into April and I've been very torn this year because one thing that I've seen going viral on the internet is this idea of using these solar powered drip watering systems. They're fairly cheap and they're really easy to set up. So you have a solar panel that goes into the sun, basically a reservoir of water, and then you put these drip lines into your garden beds and it's able to power itself and water when you want. So you could water in the middle of the night when the sun's not out. I think that's a usually recommended thing. And I, I'm so intrigued by this because it seems like such an easy setup 
without having to rely on a lot of smart home stuff, but it's also like a smart watering system. So it's definitely on the smart home side of things. So historically, I have gone above and beyond using my Eve Aqua. So I use the latest generation, which has thread built in. I set a whole schedule from my phone and I built in these PVC pipe watering things that go over top of all of my gardens. And I put a bunch of drill holes through them so it like sprinkles out over the gardens and waters them. So that's kind of been my watering apparatus so far. But this has got me so curious on what I could do without HomeKit or without having to kind of have that Wi-Fi and thread going on. Because while I have those garden beds near the house that are already set up and with the Eve Aqua, I kind of want to try this out for my farther garden beds where I have like blueberries and raspberries and tomatoes and other stuff that's outside of the range of thread and Wi-Fi. Because I want to be able to automate these things in a smart way, but I don't have a way to do it. But you don't have a way to like extend thread through our gardens just yet because ones like the Eve Aqua are technically a thread endpoint. So they're not going to be able to repeat that signal and push it further into my yard. So it's only going to go so far and then it stops. So I don't have any other smart watering stuff that I can put out there. So I'm curious at what everyone else's watering setups look like for their gardens or what they're going to be exploring this year. I always liked the idea of soaker hoses. I use those in my front yard and I have those again on an older Eve Aqua. And then I have my gardens in the back, all the vegetables, everything like that with the whole PVC overhead sprinkling situation that covers basically my varieties of strawberries and uh, cucumbers and some other like herbs, all that that I kind of go down and grab regularly and tomatoes and everything. They're further in the back where I was convinced to put another like 16 foot bed. Um, speaking of gardens, really, by the way, really quick, my trees came from fastgrowingtrees.com. Like they were a previous sponsor uh, on an episode uh, I talked about last time, actually. And the stuff came and it's all wonderful. The tree is fantastic. If you're wondering, I'm on my five in one apple tree, what I got, Granny Smith, Fuji, Gala, um, Red Delicious, and there's one more because there's five. Gala, Red Delicious, Fuji, Granny Smith. I can't remember it, but there's five, and it's not any of those. Uh, but I was pretty excited with the ones I got. Red Delicious are not my favorite, but if anything, the chickens will love them. Harrison will still probably eat them, but everything arrived really healthy, looks great, and I cannot wait to plant them when it's not snowing because somehow it's snowing again. Um, but yeah, last topic on the show, last thing that I wanted to mention, uh, let's talk about this. This came out a little bit ago. If you're watching the video side of things, I'm holding a small silver disc in my hand. This is the 12 South Butterfly. This is a two-in-one MagSafe charger, and I have a lot of good thoughts about it and a couple that I are not as great. So it's very simple, two aluminum halves, and they are magnetically held together. They come apart and you have an Apple Watch charger on one side and your MagSafe charger on the other. The Apple Watch charger, it can pivot up, so there's a little lip on the edge. Oop, that makes a loud noise when it closes because it kind of snaps into place, but uh, it pivots up, so you can put your Apple Watch on one side, your iPhone on the other. The whole top surface around the Apple Watch and then the entirety of the surface for your iPhone is like a faux leather. I assume it's not a real leather, so a vegan leather, but it feels very soft. It feels like a very nice, soft material. Then when you need to power it, there's a USB-C port on the back, and then 12 South includes in the box a USB-C to USB-C cable. It is a braided cable with a little Velcro uh, cable manager, and then a power supply. This, this looks like a generic off-the-shelf power supply. It is a 30 watt power brick and it does have swappable tips. So they're able to sell like one worldwide or if you're traveling, you're able to keep those other ones and then swap them out on the end here for whatever region you are in and the type of plug that you have. So single USB-C output, 30 watts cable charger itself. So the charger, 
I think is fantastic. I love everything about it, basically. The vegan leather feels so nice. Uh, it's just a material you don't see as often. And a lot of people say like they hate vegan leather and it should be, uh, you know, feels cheap or something. But I think the vegan leather feels better than like plastic or rubber. Like it, it seems slightly more elevated and it goes really nice with the aluminum. It's kind of a nice contrast because the leather feels warm and supple and the metal feels just kind of cold. So it's a, it's a good combination of materials that I think looks really nice. The only real gripe I have here is like how you take this with you. Cause this seems like such the perfect little product. Like I love the charger by itself, but then you end up, you still need these. You still need the cord and power supply. And there's no real elegant way to do this. So 12 South gives you like a little baggie to just dump it all in. But it just, I, I wish there was a way to put it all together nicer. If that, if that makes sense. I see this a lot. Sometimes you have little bags or little like felt cases. Mofi, a logic have done this, but they end up being so big. I wish there was like a little more compact version or something of how to put these together into one little, like a little sleeve. I would like a little bit better. And the power supply is so bulky. It's not GAN. It's nothing special. It's huge for a 30 watt. Like the anchor, you know, nanos are, are so tiny compared to this. This just feels chunky. Uh, I'd probably rather have like some multi charger that's the same size as that, that could power this as well as a couple other devices. But overall, I think this is fantastic. I really like it. Build quality is amazing. I just wish there was a way to store everything better for when you are, are actually traveling. This is very close to a MagSafe Duo situation. Big fan of it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. What is your go-to travel charger? I just still have not found a perfect one. I, I love the MagSafe Duo because it is so tiny. I just wish we had a fast charging Apple Watch. And at this point, I wish we had a, a Lightning sorry, not lightning. I wish we had USB-C instead of lightning on there, but Apple apparently didn't want to update it. They didn't want to give us a new version. So this is what we have, but I want to know what you guys think and what your favorite travel charger is for MagSafe. So I'm asking a lot of you guys for this episode. Let me know your gardening hacks. And uh, if you guys let me know whether it's on Twitter, on threads or email, uh, anything like that, I will mention it in the next episode. We'll talk about some of the tips that I get from you guys. Uh, and let me know what your guys' favorite chargers are. I will be checking those out. Uh, probably doing a video on some of my favorite travel chargers that use Qi2 or MagSafe. Thank you again for everybody listening to this episode. Please do what you guys do best. You guys are the best audience around. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or your podcast platform of choice. If you want to watch the video version of this, you can go to youtube.com slash HomeKit Insider and watch it there. You can find me on threads, on Twitter, or via email, all linked in the show notes down below. Stay tuned for the next couple episodes. We've got some cool guests coming up, some fun stuff to talk about. We'll see you guys next time.